Hey everybody, Linda here, and today we're going to do a response video, my all-time 10 favorite video games. Let's start the video. So, for the video, it was difficult to get to 10. I had to go from 50, 25, 15, and then I realized there's no way to do 10 because there's different reasons why I like 10 off stream and why I like 10 on stream. So I'm going to do a two-parter. I'm going to do part one, which is here, and you're watching it right now, where it's my all-time 10 favorite video games off stream. And the reason why I did that was because I realized I had a bunch of games that I streamed that I would love playing on the channel over and over again, but they were not ones that I liked to play off on my own, but these are the video games that I can play off stream and no matter what's going on, I can clear the save data, start fresh, the story never gets old, and the gameplay is never old. So these are not in any particular order, it was just too difficult to pick an order. But we'll start off with a classic and the first game is Super Mario World. I have played this game countless times, I have beat this game countless times, and I just love it. I When I first saw this game being introduced to the world and I saw the commercial, I was so hyped to see Yoshi for the first time, to see the cape, all the new power-ups, to see that there was hidden parts of the world that were up and down, you, you had water areas, you had so many things to go through. And the reason why I was so hyped as a kid was also, it was one of the first launch titles to think of like, you were like, oh my gosh, this is literally the first game? Super Nintendo's gonna be awesome. And so I keep deleting the save data, starting fresh, brand new, and it will never get old in my opinion. The next game on the list is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I know this might shock some people that this is on the list, but I've played through it a couple more times. And the reason why it's not going to be on the list for games I beat for 2021 is because I literally just beat it <laughs> in the end of the year. And once I figured out how to play it all and beat it, I kept playing it. I don't care what I'm doing, what's going on. I've played it offline, just on my own, and I enjoyed every part of the story. Now, you're not going to see me getting all the Korok seeds or getting every single thing in every part of the area or getting all the shrines, but... I just enjoy playing it and this was one of the games that introduced me to Legend of the Franchise like of all of the Legend of Zelda games to where I now am going to play Ocarina of Time I've been playing it I've been doing the same thing that I did when I first played the other one was drop it when I get frustrated and put it back on so this is basically what made me a Zelda you know fan of all Zelda games so I can't wait for Breath of the Wild too. I will play this again. And I enjoyed Age of Calamity too, to see where the story progressed. So I'm gonna be hyped for the second game. The third game on the list is another Super Nintendo game and that is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I have played this game so many times that I don't care how many times I played it, it's still fun to me. And that's sometimes because I keep forgetting the game. <laughs> and I've done this on stream. I played this on stream and it was a classic game. And then I was like, oh snap, I forgot a lot of this stuff. And that's because I put it down, it'd be like four or five years. And then it's like a brand new fresh story to me. But it's literally the show. So you know the show, you're gonna know all the enemies, you're gonna know all the stories, you're gonna know like Rita Repulsa, Goldar, different things like that. And I liked that it was a beat em up and I liked that it was a beat-em-up with patterns. So if you just memorize the patterns, you're gonna crush this game. And it's not so easy to where you're like, oh my gosh, I literally played this game and I was bored, or I played this game and it was way too easy. It still has times where you have to pay attention and the final boss, it takes a long time to master that boss. So I barely one credit cleared this game. And even then, there's moments where I'm like, oh shoot, <laughs> I forgot the patterns. And you think, oh, you're done. And then it's like, there's a second phase. So practice this game, you will love it. The next game on the list is Popeye. 
I have played Popeye so many times with family, friends, and this is a classic NES game that never gets old and it's repeating over and over again to where it's the same levels just gets harder. And that's, I think, what is the beauty of this game is that you literally don't see an end. You just see the next one with a different symbol and your lady love is throwing stuff down for you to catch and you got an evil guy who just keeps trying to take her away from you. So I love this game. I don't care that it's not really got an ending to it because it's Popeye. His story is so classic. Literally, go get some spinach, you get some strength, and you defeat the evil one. Classic in my opinion. And it never gets old, so that's why Popeye's on the list. Now we're going to move on to a PS1 title, and that is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I have played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater so much that I have memorized all the levels. Now, you can play it with the other skaters, you can challenge yourself to 100% it, which I've done several times. And no matter how many times you do it, it's still a classic. The soundtrack is so good, I could just leave the game on and literally play this and just be like, okay, it's a CD. <laughs> I've done that plenty of times where I've just played this as a CD and just left it in the background while I was editing a video or even just playing another game. I left, like this would be on another TV in the background playing while I'm watching that and that's what I would do. I would either play it on YouTube if I didn't want to burn my system because, let's face it, PS2s and PS1s, they're becoming obsolete. So I sometimes will just watch it on YouTube while somebody has the soundtrack playing. But it's one of the first to make skateboarding a regular staple and it was so good that I could play it over and over again and never get tired of it. Another classic that's on PS1 that I can play many times and I never get bored of it is Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot 1 is so good that I have just sometimes just played it just randomly and I'll play a couple levels. I won't even, I'll you know just go in and be like okay I'm, I'm wanting to play this game and I've seen a lot of people stream this game and get frustrated but I understand because it's a classic that it has some weird jump mechanics to some people but once you figure it out you will keep playing it till you cannot play it anymore. And I love the story, it's hilarious. It's one of the ones that made me go, oh crap, this is gonna be, uh, like I predicted it, that it was gonna be a staple where we're gonna wait for one, two, three, four, and then it became bad, but we got a good game again. We got Crash Bandicoot 4, we got the Insane Trilogy brought back to life, but I do love the original. You never go wrong with the very first one. And I do love the, the soundtrack. I love the theme. It's another game that I sometimes will just play the theme and I'll watch covers of the theme. And my favorite, the reason why Crash is my number one mascot, is he talked crap to Nintendo. Booyah. Now, the next game on the list, I debated about which one to pick and you'll see why in a second. It's a PS2 title. GTA 3. I loved GTA since the first, you know, 3D one popped up and it wasn't top-down view. This came out, it was a game changer. It changed a lot of PS2 games for the better. It was a game that you literally were surprised by all the stuff there was to do. I played this game day one and I didn't put it down until I beat it with my brother. Now, Granted, we were young and we were not supposed to be playing the game, but hey, say la vie. You gotta play a game you love. So I played it. I played it in the room, hidden, because I knew that the family didn't like it, but you gotta sometimes be sneaky about games. Now, the reason why I picked number three is because it was the very first one to put this game on the map. GTA wasn't barely talked about. I mean, a lot of people didn't like the top-down view. I didn't particularly like it. And I didn't really get the story. I didn't understand it until this came out. Now, I liked the fact that he didn't talk much or talk at all because of the reason was you became the character. You were the one who was the person telling, hey, go do this mission for me, come back and get your thing. And then also you wanted to make sure that you were growing and getting up into the franchise, into the whatever 
you're trying to be and trying to be the boss. Now, I love that I can pop this in, start fresh, brand new, and it's good. Now, I did not pick the definitive edition because it's crap. I picked the original because there's the original soundtrack and there's not as many glitches. It's not bad. So, definitely play the original. Don't play the definitive edition. You won't be disappointed. This game on the list was something that I debated about as well. Saints Row the Third. This game was the reason why I started playing Saints Row. It was one of the first games that I heard about Saints Row. And I played this like GTA 3 from beginning to end and I did not put it down or play any other games until I beat the game. I was so immersed in it and when I saw the trailers and everything like that, I was playing all the songs that were on the soundtrack on repeat. This game, I did not stop until I got to the end. And I replayed it several times because I saw there was a different ending. I saw that there was multiple different ways to get like destroy the building, keep the building, play as this character as male, female, um, save this person, don't save this person. And I literally loved it so much that I still have it. And I got the full package DLC version, which I didn't have to get because I already had the game, but I wanted to see what the DLC was about. And I liked that even though they did it in a fresh new era, it was a game that made me laugh. Not only was I invested in the characters, I made sure that I protected them as much as I could. And that's a good storyteller. The people who made the games did a really good job. And that's why I didn't pick Saints Row 1 or Saints Row 2 because a lot of the characters I got invested in, they died and then they went, oh, okay, yeah, go defend them, go go uh, get revenge. And then it was like, oh, okay, oh well. We didn't see a funeral, we didn't see anything. You cared about Johnny, you cared about Shondi, you care about Angel. Even Angel was there for five minutes. It's like, you literally cared about them. And I'm playing through Saints Row again. I just finished Saints Row 1 and I loved it, but... Again, the characters were not remem rememberable. Like to me, some of them were just like, okay, they're there and then they're gone. And Saints Row 2, I didn't pick that because I found out Volition made a mistake and then they just changed the story to where Julian was basically the mastermind and trying to double cross you. But in reality, he wasn't supposed to be that in the second game. So that's why I picked the third one because even though it was you know, not the original style. They went so out of the box to not be a clone of GTA that I loved it. Now, some people don't like that, but for me, this was a classic and it will never get old. Now, the ninth game on the list was, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? The Master System version, because this was the one I had the whole time. Now, I did play the DOS version or the PC version, depending on what game system you're playing. I had this one. I had a Game Gear and I had also in my like a converter, I had a Master System converter set so I could play this game. And I loved Carmen Sandiego. It was a childhood TV show that I loved. I loved the, you know, the game show. I I was invested in Carmen Sandiego. I loved playing all the games and seeing the characters and different things going on. And no matter how many times I play this game, and granted, you might not even see Carmen Sandiego for a long time, I've enjoyed it. I will say it's not for everybody. This is one of the games on my list that I probably wouldn't recommend unless you have a thesaurus, which we now have Google. You can look it up and figure it out and even the walkthroughs are like, well, I can't really tell you what the next one's going to be because it's random. There is the criminals and they are random, but most of the time it's like once you figure out who it is, you kind of can go through the steps and know what to do, but it's kind of tedious. So this game is a classic for me because I grew up with this, the educational games, but it's not one of those ones where you can't keep playing it. So I can play this forever, but that's because it's me. It's a classic, I know the story, and I love this game, so. Get it, try it. Find out where she is in the world. The final game on the list is Tekken Tag Tournament. 
And the reason why I love Tekken Tag Tournament, and I didn't pick the other ones because, again, I debated about which one to go for, was because of the simple fact that it was the first time they innovated this system and they incorporated two-player combo fighting. I didn't expect that from them. I thought they were just going to keep doing the single fighter for the rest of the time and all the other franchises were going to do that. And when they jumped into this, I was super stoked about it. I loved it. I, I loved the fact that I could use combos. I could do Jin or I could have, you know, Eddie Gordo or whoever I wanted to invite to the, the battle. I could do that. And it was a staple that just got a upgrade in my opinion. And that's why I kept playing it. I've deleted all my saves data from all of my memory cards uh, and I have a couple of them and I'll just keep playing it and it's on repeat and I don't care and I love the fact that it wasn't just you know the normal bosses they actually threw in some twist to it to where you you expected you know of course they throw the the kid off the cliff or throw the father off the cliff whoever it is because you know there's there's three people to pick from <laughs> and normally it's just usually Jin getting tossed off the cliff but it was funny to see that they actually invested in a battle where you could have them fight together. And it was weird to see, but you got used to it after a little bit of time. So that's why I picked this one over all of them. And that is my top 10 for games I play off stream. Let me know in the comments down below. What are your top 10? And if you are new, please hit the sub button. It helps out the channel. And who I'm going to tag is everybody. It's an open tag. You can join in if you want to. And if you have your list and you want to do a two-part, you can do a two-part. If you have your list and it's just 10 games, do 10 games. Call it a day. So thank you, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games.